Um, good morning. This is Ms. Nelson and Ms. Griffin, and we're sixth grade ELA at Central Middle School. And today we're going to teach a lesson about summarizing informational text. So, with that said, we're going to start class as usual with going over our essential and focused questions. Our essential question is what is included in a good summary? The focus question is what do good readers do to summarize informational text free of opinion and or judgment? And you're the good readers. Today, I can summarize an informational text. Okay, as you recall, summarizing um, is just a brief retelling of an event and it gives you um, the central points and events of that passage. Summary is different in literature than it is in informational text. So today we'll be focusing mainly on informational text. So keep it in mind that that's going to be passages that you read about that are just giving you information, just sharing some information with you. And the way that you're basically going to summarize, we're going to give you a couple of strategies today. Um, one of the ways that you're going to summarize is to always try to find out your central idea and then add to that the best supporting details, the details that have the most relevant to the topic, that are most relevant to the topic. So in talking about summary today, we're going to go over a few passages with you. They'll be brief passages, and the first strategy is going to be to identify the topic, the central idea, and then some supporting details about that central idea. Um, the most important thing that you can remember is that when you're summarizing information, you never want to have judgment or your opinion. So when you're the reader, when you're reading the summaries, or when you're reading the passages, you need to make sure that you take out any judgments or any opinions. Those are gonna be your feeling statements, like I can't believe this, or I don't like this, or I do like this. You wanna make sure that you take those bits of information out of the text and don't include those in your summary. So again, to recap, the summary is the central idea plus the supporting details without the opinion. What would it be like to have teeth like a shark? A shark can have up to 3,000 teeth at one time. Shark teeth grow in rows, one behind another. Most sharks have five rows of teeth. When a shark loses a tooth, it is replaced by a tooth from the row behind it. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I don't have shark teeth. Okay, so the first thing that we realize is our topic. And our topic, of course, is reading about sharks. So this, to summarize, we know that it's going to have a lot to do with sharks. We're going to take each sentence and we're going to just highlight the main, the keywords in each sentence. So we don't have very many sentences, so we won't have very many words that are going to be highlighted. But we're going to take the words that we do choose to highlight from each sentence, mix them all around and come up with a summary. So uh, making sure that we leave out anything that is judgment or opinion. So what would it be like to have teeth like a shark? We know that this is going to be not only about shark, but about the teeth of a shark. A shark can have up to 3,000 teeth at one time. That is a detail that's important that they have 3,000 teeth, but we already see this word, so we only need the 3,000 there. Um, the shark's teeth grow in rows. That's an important supporting detail. And they have how many rows? Five rows. When a shark loses a tooth, it is replaced by a tooth from the row behind it. The key word there is that those shark teeth can be replaced. And then in our final sentence, let's talk about that one. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I don't have shark teeth. That's going to be a judgment. That's someone's judgment about having shark teeth. So we know that we don't need to include any of this information in our summary. So now we're left with the word teeth, shark, 3,000, rows, five, and replaced. So if we take those words and mix them all together, then we're going to come up with the keywords that we need to include in our summary. So your summary might read something like this. Shark teeth are three, oh, well, no, not so much. Um, 
Shark teeth, there are 3,000 that grow in rows, five rows, and they're replaced. So those are type, that's sort of like the summary. Those are the things that you would want to include in the summary. That shark have 3,000 teeth that grow in rows, and when they, one is lost, they're replaced. So those are the key ideas about this passage. Okay, do you have anything to add to that one? Okay, let's try it again. Let's go with um, another passage. When Lewis Braille was just three years old, he was in an accident that left him blind. When he was a teenager, Lewis created a set of raised dots that blind people could use to read. In 1829, Lewis published the first book using his system of raised dots, which is called the Braille system and is still used today. Okay, so we have a lot of information. We know that the topic is about how did the Braille system come about. So the topic is going to be about the Braille system. Now, when he was three years old, he was in an accident that left him blind. We know here that we need to know the name Lewis Braille because he is the person that invented the Braille system. But do we need to include that he was in an accident that left him blind? No, that is not information that's going to be in the summary. When he was a teenager, he created a system of raised dots. We do need to include that he created a system of raised dots that helps blind, that blind people can use to read. And he published this in a book, which is called The Braille System, and we still use it today. So the main thing is that the main thing about this passage, if we were going to summarize it, is that Louis Braille created a system of raised dots called the Braille system. You may want to include that we still use it today, but most people are they do know that the Braille system is the system used today to help blind people to be able to read. So when you pull out these key details, when you highlight or box off just the key details, the keywords in a sentence, and put those all together, you are able to create a summary. Now this piece has no um, judgment or opinion in it, so we don't have to deal with that. Okay, let's try a third one. Even though Mars is our planetary neighbor, Earth and Mars do not have much in common. Mars is smaller than Earth and much, much colder. Not only that, the atmosphere on Mars is mostly carbon dioxide, which is poisonous to humans. There is also no water on Mars. Would you want to visit Mars? Okay, so that last sentence there, would you want to visit Mars? You can see that that sentence is, the writer is calling on the reader to make an opinion, to voice an opinion. So first thing we would need to do is know that we're probably not going to know, it's not going to be about visiting Mars, but we do know that the topic is Mars. And it is not only about Mars, but we know that looking at our text, um, structure that it's comparing and contrasting Mars to the Earth. So we know that our summary is going to be about a comparison between Mars and Earth. And it tells us they don't have much in common. Mars is smaller and much, much colder. So we know that the size and the temperature are two things that they're comparing um, in this text. Not only that, they're comparing the atmosphere um, and the water. So those are the things that we would need to box off, that there's wa the water, there's differences in the water, the atmosphere, the temperature, and the size. So those would, that would be the things that you would need to focus in on when you're writing the summary, that Mars and Earth have differences in size, temperature, atmosphere, and the amount of water. So that's what we are summarizing here. That would be a summary of this text. Now we're gonna do a fun one about Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse is much older than he looks. He was created by Walt Disney in 1928. His first public appearance was in a black and white cartoon called Steamboat Lily. At that time, most cartoons were still silent. Steamboat Lily was one of the first cartoons with sound. Okay, so we know our topic is Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. So let's go ahead and highlight. We know we're talking about Mickey Mouse, much older than he looks. So that's going to be an opinion, a judgment. So we're probably not going to need to use much older than he looks. He was created by Walt Disney. That's probably a piece of information that we do want to include in our summary. So now we have Mickey Mouse created by Walt Disney. 
Uh, not so much 1928. First public appearance, black and white cartoon called Steamboat Willie. So we could say that he first appeared as Steamboat Willie. So those are um, probably important. We, it's not necessarily um, important to know that it was a black and white cartoon. Um, we don't probably need to know at that time all the cartoons were silent. Um, and it was one of the first cartoons with sound. It's probably an important thing, but we don't need to be repetitive. We don't need to repeat that. So we could simply summarize this by saying that Mickey Mouse, who was created by Walt Disney, first appeared as Steamboat Willie, one of the first cartoons with sound. That would be a summary of this text. Okay, so now we've done four different passages with you. Um, we're going to pause on the next one and let you think through as we go through this one. Um, kind of see if you can do it at home um, on your own. So let's take a look at this one. This one is about the human skeleton. If you didn't have bones, you would be more like a beanbag than a person. Your bones have two main purposes. First, they give your body structure so you can stand and move. Second, they protect soft organs like your heart and your lungs. When you grow up, your body will have 206 bones to do these jobs. Okay, I want you to think about, first of all, what is the topic here? What is the one thing that this whole passage is focusing on? Go ahead and write that word down, um, what you think that this is all about. I'll give you a second or two to think about that. Okay, so we know that this is about the bones that you have in your body. Now, the fact that it says if you didn't have bones, you would look like more like a beanbag than a person. Now, do we really want to compare? Is this passage comparing a person's skeletal system with a bean bag, or is it more or less giving you information about the bones? So we know it's giving you, we're not really talking about a bean bag. So we'll go ahead and, and mark through all of that information. So, so far in our summary, we have the word bones. If you take the next sentence, your bones have two main purposes. What words kind of stand out in your mind out of that sentence? Um, what are the key words there? Think about it for a second. Okay, I think the words two main purposes, your bones have two main purposes. And this is what this passage is about. And then it basically tells you, so out of this next sentence, first they give your body structure so you can stand and move. What would be the key word of that sentence? Okay, so we know there that the word structure stands out. The first thing is it gives your body structure so it helps you stand up nice and straight. Second, they protect soft organs like your heart and lungs. So the key word here would be to protect. So we can line through everything else. When you grow up, your body will have 206 bones to do these jobs. So 206 bones may be an important thing to add to our summary. So now we're left with the words bones, two main purposes, structure, protect, 206 bones. So we could say the summary, if you take all these words together and try to make a sentence that gives you a summary of this passage, you could say the 206 bones in your body have two main purposes, which are structure, and support. Protect. Um, protect. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Griffin. Okay, so I hope that this little exercise has helped you all to have a better understanding of what it means to give a summary. And um, I'm hoping that informational summaries, when you try to box off those keywords and mix them all together and come up with a good summary, would be one good strategy to help in making that a little bit easier for you to summarize informational text. Thank you. Have a good day.